When we bought our house, the terrace looked like this. Stay with me to watch how I turned it into this cozy, comfortable place. First, I started with the floor. We didn't want to replace the old tiles yet, so I decided to paint them, giving the floor a rustic country look. Going over the borders and the edges with a brush and planning to do the rest using a roller. I am using a chalk paint here, but I have cleaned the tiles well, sanded them and cleaned them again with vinegar to give the chalk paint something to grip on. I gave the whole surface two coats of a grey chalk paint. Then I cut a sponge the size of the tile and prepared a tray to spread the paint on. I am putting a small amount of paint and spreading it over the tray with the roller and spraying it with water to loosen the paint a little bit. Then I am pressing the sponge into the paint to let it soak. It doesn't have to be covered 100% as I want the design on the tiles to be uneven. Next, I am carefully placing the sponge over a tile and pressing it. I am using an old white chalk paint here. My next step is a cream chalk paint. And I have repeated the process, only I placed the cream squares randomly without any particular order. Some of them I placed on the top of the white squares, the others on the top of the grey ones. Then sanding it all with the white sandpaper, dusting it off and covering with the three coats of a resistant varnish. I have also corrected the corners and the edges of the tile with a small art brush. The design can be clear or not, but the tiles must be divided clearly. And here it is. My second project is this table. I didn't take a picture of it when it was dark brown. It is a quite old table, and I painted it with Svenska blue chalk paint by Anne Sloan. Then, when the paint was still wet, I slightly wiped off some of the paint and did the same with the white paint. To finish, I sanded the table and covered it with three coats of varnish. I like the way it looks on this floor. My third project is this French cabinet. It does show some scratches, but you know, it is in a good condition. I have given it two coats of a dark egg blue chalk paint. Then I mixed a dark egg blue with a white and painted the center of each door with this lighter color. I have lightly distressed the high points and applied the clear wax to the whole piece to seal the paint. After that, I mixed the clear wax with some of a dark egg blue paint and applied it into the crevices to make the shades and to get the high points standing out even more. I forgot to mention that I also slightly dry brushed the tips of the details with the white paint. And I did it before sanding. 
My next step is applying a dark wax into the crevices and the corners. I want the cabinet to be of a light color, but I also want the details to stand out. That is why I am creating the shades with the different colors. I am using a makeup brush and then I am wiping the excesses off, leaving the wax only in the deep crevices. To finish the piece, I have applied some gold gilding wax to the details and gave the cabinet another coat of wax. That old window frame on the wall I have painted before and I have a full tutorial for it. You can find it in the description below. I like the carvings on this little side table and I want to show you how this dark wood can be updated easily with the chalk paint. I am using again a Svenska blue chalk paint and I am lightly brushing it into the wood, taking very little paint to my brush. Here you can see how it can be done on the top of the table. This is one of the many ways to apply chalk paint. Not covering the wood completely, but dry brushing it. You can do one coat or two, depending on how light you want your piece to look. Here I want to show you how to take excesses of the paint if you think you applied too much of it. I am spraying the paint with water and then brushing off the excesses of the paint using a clean brush, but I am doing it when the paint is still wet. Here I am repeating the process with the old ochre chalk paint. Again I am taking very little paint to my brush and dry brushing it over the wood. Using this method you just have to be patient, trying to spread the paint evenly.
tail to my tears is turning this horrible red plastic beam into this beautiful piece. I have sanded the surface first to give the chalk paint something to grip on. Then I am applying a grey chalk paint by tapping it in. Because it is a plastic surface, I want to create as much texture as possible. For my second coat, I am mixing a chalk paint with the sawdust. You can see on the bottom of the bin that in some parts the plastic was damaged. By creating a lot of texture, I will cover the uneven parts. I have shown you in my other videos how good medium the sawdust can be in creating a texture. I am tapping it in with a small cheap brush. Here is a close look of the texture. My next step is a white wash. I am using a white chalk paint diluted with water one to one, a wet rug and a spray bottle. Before applying a wash, the surface must be completely dry. I am spraying the surface with water, then applying my wash in criss-cross motion. This way it gets into all low points I have created before. Then, with the wet rug, I am taking off the excesses. Here, I am using an old white chalk paint. If you want to use it, bear in mind that it will look a lot brighter when it's dry. Better to apply a light coat first and then a bit more, depending on how you want it to look. My next step is a stencil. I am using a dark egg blue on floor and a mixture of the two of them, which created a slightly darker color. With a very little paint on my brush, I am tapping the paint into the stencil. It is better if the paint is not runny, or you will end up with a messy design. I am randomly applying all three colors, tapping them in. I want the dark egg blue being more pronounced and applying it again on the top of the other colors. As you probably noticed, I am using the same brush for all the colors, just wiping it off periodically. Then, I have repeated the process on the bottom of the bin. I am lucky having my husband's laser, but otherwise I would have to measure to find the middle to apply the stencil correctly. To make the corners looking rusty, I am applying a wash with the on floor chalk paint, spraying the surface with water, applying the paint, and then wiping it off with the wet rug. The wash is a quite easy process. If you think you applied too much paint, just spray it with water again, wash your rug, and gently wipe the surface. 
As you see, I am wiping it with the tapping motion. This way, the paint sets in more naturally. To bring all the colors together, I am spraying the whole surface with water and with the wet rug, gently spreading the on fleur paint over the surface. Here, I am applying the same stencil to the top of the bin. And here it is, isn't it a beauty? It did take me a while to change this one into this, but I am delighted with the result. I wanted to create a bright summer environment and I think I have achieved it. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and stay tuned for my next fun projects.